Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and today we are talking about the further ahead in the Agile methodology. So far we have covered a lot of basic concepts about Agile methodology in terms of comparing it with traditional approaches and also working with the basic manifesto, the core values of Agile and definitely the principles which are reliable on that. Now today it's time we should get deeper into that and we will be understanding more about the different work items which can be found specific to the Scrum and what exactly these are. So there are different work items which are available as a part of the Agile methodology or specific to different frameworks. So as we talk about different frameworks, the work items vary. For example, Epic, Backlogs, what type of backlogs you will have, the charts, the reports, the dashboard, there are a lot many other things like tasks or user stories and uh, the bugs, defects, so yes. And we call them as the work item type. Like what kind of work items does your project involve and your process include? And that's what we need to make sure that do we understand different types of and the various uh, you know, different work item types which can be used in any Agile methodology. So let's understand more about this in this particular tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be understanding what are work item types, epic, themes, user stories, task, issues, spike, and technical debt. To begin with this tutorial, all we want to make you understand that when you talk about Scrum or Agile development model, there are a lot of work item types where the work items are basically helpful to determine that how you will be processing your project and how you will be determining that what kind of work items will be required. So a work item in your project is an item that indicates the type of work, what needs to be done and set its target date to get it done. So generally, uh, when you talk about creating an epic or having a user story, task and a lot of other artifacts of throughout the life cycle will be measurable unit of the life cycle and does help you to determine that how these activities will be broken into simpler forms and how you will be achieving them from time to time. And thus, we put them all these artifacts together and call it as work item types or simply WIT. So this work item types help an organization to understand that how a particular project will be simplified and at the same time how it will be distributed among the development team to further get an update on that. The work item types available to you are based on the processes used when your project was created. So here is like the basic and very important understanding of work item type which says that it may vary depending on the frameworks or methodology or even the organization which you are working on so it might not be similar for everyone who is looking at this particular curriculum but a lot of them may have a differences of work item types in their organization specific to the organization or the process which you're following but yes, each work item is based on a work item type and is assigned an identifier which is unique within an organization or project collection. So all we need to do is identify that what kind of work items you have in your organization. To begin with the very first, so we are just covering some of the generic types of the work item types in this tutorial. To begin with, the first and foremost thing is an epic. An Agile Epic is a body of work that can be broken down into simplified tasks called as user stories based on the needs or requests of the customer or user end. It's a defined body of work that is segmented into specific tasks called as either stories or user stories based on the needs and requests of the customer and the end users. Now generally, when you talk about the EPIC, it's, it's a summary of the entire requirement, what you need to have. Traditionally, we used to call it as requirement gathering, and here we call it as an EPIC gathering, or determining the EPICs. EPICs are a big chunk of piece about a particular functionality, or maybe it could be called as a feature. And now this feature will be defined as a broken into simpler form either in terms of stories where user stories can further be defined into simpler tasks 
And if it is possible that user stories are so simple that you can directly take user stories into your sprint, or sometimes the user stories, if they have multiple sub features and you want to concentrate independently on them, then you would prefer to take into consideration the broking of the IS, uh, user story into task before you can take them into sprint. But yes, it all depends on the organization structure and the process which you're following. Sometimes the project characteristics or product characteristics can also be considered. The next one here is themes. Now, when you talk about a theme, theme is basically a group of user stories that are sharing a common attribute and or convenience they are grouped together. So generally, there is a possibility that some of the applications may have some of the features which are related to a particular functionality or maybe a particular requirement. So your requirements may be distributed among different user stories that one of the part of this particular requirement will be created in the user story one and the other part of the, this particular requirement will be covered as a part of user story two and some of them as a user story three. For example, if we talk about the page login, login also has functional requirements, has non-functional requirements. If you talk about the non-functional specifically, again, they may have usability features. They may have uh, non-functional as security, recoverability, and a lot of other things like that. And not possibly all of these can be covered at once. Thus, if you have to combine them together to showcase that, that these are a common attributes which will be put together in order to test, you can define them as theme X. So you can see a quick template of the same in the diagram shown here, that how exactly the attributes of different themes are distributed in initiatives, epics, and stories. The individual user stories, however, can accomplish uh, in a single sprint. So that's possible that you can take a particular story in each sprint that we have learned in the previous tutorial. For example, you might have three different user stories that are all uh, PR activities, where public relation activities are user acceptance. The next one here is user stories. Now, obviously, we know about the themes, we know about epics. Now, we are looking into the next level of breaking down into the system as user stories. Scrum generally doesn't have stories or epics as per the Scrum guide. But Scrum has a product backlog item like PBI, which are often split into epics, stories, technical tasks, bugs, in most teams because it's very useful. So it's just that like standard standard wise, the Scrum doesn't say that we have straightforward stories, but we derive them from uh, the product backlog items in order to put them into epic stories and tasks. Uh, of course, all these are the work item types of the Scrum. And generally, when you talk about a user story, it is a simpler form of an epic. So epic might be a huge thing to deal with and not every time an epic can be directly processed in these sprints. Thus, an epic has to be broken down into simpler user stories, which can be further broken down if required into tasks, or the story itself can be directly into uh, consideration for the sprint. But what exactly it is, when you talk about these user stories, uh, user stories are simpler forms of the epic so i may have a bigger requirement for example login page and if i want to deal with user stories say a user is trying with a valid scenario a user is trying with invalid scenario or maybe uh, when i have a banking application i may say that one of the user is trying to withdraw money one of the user is trying to get a mini statement another user is trying to get a balance inquiry so there are a lot of user scenarios and the same user scenarios are called as user stories now, this is what my user expects to do as a part of it. For example, the epic will be split into smaller user stories and will not remain some time. If you have four user stories that represent what was your epic, the epic is actually now gone and replaced by four user stories. So you don't really have to say that I'm considering this four epic or one epic. We are rather testing the four user stories. The next one is task. Of course, now we know about how epics can be transformed into user stories. And if user stories are still bigger, uh, we look forward to further break them down into task. T. That's very important to remember that Agile is all about breaking down the task into as simpler form as possible in order to process them into a sprint. 
So as a part of the sprint, you just try to take the broken, most broken form of the requirement in order to process them. Thus, we have the hierarchy of epic user story and task. If you think your organization does not have anything called as task and you're directly processing user stories, that means your user stories are quite simple and does not need any further breaking them down. Thus, you may not see a task in your organization. But as per the fundamentals of the Scrum methodology, you do have the task as a part of it. Because generally, we are talking about the complex scenarios where the scenarios are epic and then we convert them into user stories and following that, put them into the task. Now, what exactly the tasks are? The tasks are used to break down user stories even further. Tasks are the smallest unit used in the Scrum to track down. A task should be completed by one person on the team through the team may choose to pair up uh, when doing the work. So this is possible that the team may choose if you want to work closely together, two people working on that. But yes, the task is generally considered to be handled by one of the member of the team who is developing that. Typically, user stories will have multiple associated tasks. So you may have different activities which might be associated with each other and we need to just determine the same. So this is what is actually a task. Moving up next is issues. Issues is generally uh, specific to Jira or even to an agile project. Issues are generally a building blocks of any Jira project. Now what exactly an issue in generic form? Generally, whenever you come across any activity, if you talk specific to Jira, an issue is listed in order to address or observe. So a G Jira allows you to create an issue in form of all these things what you see on the right. You can create a story, subtask, epic, bug, or anything. So whatever you list, you uh, based on your work item types, all the work item types are actually referred to an issue in Jira. So this is what our main intention is. As we will follow to understand Jira in more detail, we should know that how Jira accepts these work item types. So work item types will be logged in Jira as an issue. But yes, of course, the issue will have the different types to be selected in form of epics, stories, tasks, subtasks, or bug and many other custom created things as Jira allows you to customly define what list of uh, Braille you should have under the issues. Well, another thing here is when you talk about the spike. Spike is also a very common term, but not quite uh, often used in Scrum. When you talk about spike, it is an invention of extreme programming and uh, or a special type of user story that is used to gain the knowledge necessary to reduce the risk of a technical approach, better understand a requirement or increase the reliability of a story estimate. Now generally, let me tell you when you talk about spikes, it's just not so common in organization wide. But yes, some of the organization who are practicing extreme programming can generally experience that. Not only that, a lot of organization also make use of spike in a very generic form in order to explain more about the same. So when you talk about spike, it is an additional activity which is done in order to reduce the further efforts required during a sprint. For example, if your sprint is lasting for 10 days and on the third day you do identify that you are having a delay in your schedule and probably you will not be able to uh, complete your task in the uh, sprint, then you may do an additional activity which might be required within the sprint in order to reduce your task uh, to finish your work further. For example, again, if you talk about maybe the technical knowledge which you don't have in order to create or develop a particular piece of code, then you might quickly take up a training or maybe quickly have a negotiation or discussion with the customer or probably another source of information like consultants in order to understand what exactly it is and how it can be processed. So when you in allocate that extra time which is required within the sprint and was unplanned, you call it as a spike. So here a spike is basically to add some additional effort in order to reduce your effort in future of a particular sprint or maybe between the sprints. So whenever you do anything extra is what you have a hype called a spike. Another important thing as terminology to understand is what is technical debt. When you talk about technical debt, which is also in short form known as tech debt or code debt, 
where it generally describes what results when development teams take actions to expedite the delivery of the piece of functionality or a project which later needs to be refactored. In other words, it's the result of prioritizing speedy delivery over perfect code. Now, generally, the technical debt stands for a debit. That means there is something which is yet to be done or something which needs a rework. And we have to keep an eye on that from time to time in order to determine how much technical debt do we have. As the term says, technical debt, it's all about your activities which you're performing or probably the activities which you have not performed or excused for the time being. That with this functionality or this particular code will be written later and later and later. And every time when you do that and mention that some activities as later, then you are actually building up the technical debt. Technical debt is not a good thing when you're talking about the sprints or developing a project because sometimes it may look like an iceberg one just like on the graph if you see the depth ceiling the depth ceiling shows that it just looks quite small but might have a big technical depth below that so we should always keep an eye on the technical depths which we have within the project and try to overcome that as early as possible otherwise it's just like an iceberg the tip might be small but have a large chunk of uh, documents or a large chunk of activities pending for you at the bottom so we should not look forward to have a lot of technical depths which might suspend your project or even terminate your work